All right, so let's add a search filter first, and then we will add filter by user and filter by tag. So let's open our home component once again. And at first I'm going to code everything here, but we will move it into a component. So first thing I want to add here, we have this vif block, but we don't have the vl. So if there are no listings, let's just show a text that there are no listing. So we can just say vls on another div, and let's just say there are no listings. And that's it. So nothing to import it. Then I'm going to delete this console.log, and above this div, we will have our search section. Let's have another div and I'm going to apply some classes first. Item center, justify between and margin bottom four. Within that, I will have another div that says filters for now. So this is a placeholder for the applied filters. And on the other side or another div, we will have our form. Let's add a class first and we will have a form here. All we want in this form is one input field. So let's import our input field component. So in the script tag, we can say input field from the components folder and use it inside the form and add our props or attributes. I don't actually want a label, but we need to provide it. So I will set it to an empty string. Then I want an icon. So I will set it to magnifying glass. Let's have a placeholder as well. And I will just say search dot 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 and a V model to get the data out of this input field. But if we look at it now, we have our filters and our input field. Since this is a search input field, we can actually use the type search just like this to have this clear button. When I add something here, then I can click on this and it will delete whatever is in that field. Let's add the V model here and we will create a form. And within that, we will have a search property. Let's go up to the script tag and say const form. We will set this to use form from inertia view three. And we just want a search property. And I will set this to an empty string at first. Now what's going to happen when we submit this form? So we want to add something here and press enter and it should be submitted to the same page and filter these results based on that criteria. So let's do that. Back to our home component. Let's create a function just under that form. So I will call it search. And we will set this to an arrow function. We want to submit this using the inertia router. So again, we need to import this from inertia view. And on this instance, we have all the HTTP methods. We can grab the get method, which is looking for a URL. It is looking for a data or a payload. And also we can include the options. So of course we can use our route function, which is part of that Ziggy package and submit this to the same page. So this is the first argument for this get method. The second one is the payload, which is an object. So we can pass an object and say we have a search property or a parameter, which is coming from our form dot search. Now let's add this to our form on the form tag. We can say at submit dot prevent. And we just want to use that search function. All right, so we are not doing anything special at this point. We are just submitting the value of this input field to the same page through a GET request. So we will have it in the URL. Let's see if it works. If I add hello, press enter, we see search equals to hello. So that search is our parameter that we specified here. And the value is coming from the input field. Now, of course, we need to handle this. And you notice the search input field is going away. So we need to also keep that in the field if there is a parameter in the URL. And we will handle this in our Laravel backend. So let's open our listing controller again and let's accept the request object here. So we want to bring in request from HTTP and let's die and dump request to see what we get. So you notice we have that search parameter in the URL. And if I reload and let me zoom in. So under query parameters, we have search, which is set to hello. So we have access to the URL parameters. Now there are two ways to handle this. One is to apply the filters here in the controller, which can get quite messy. And the other way, which is a better way is to have something called a scoped filters or scoped function. And we will define those in our model class, but before adding those to the class. Let me just show you an instance of how you can apply this in a controller. Right here, for example, we are returning 
the listings with the users and then we are sorting them and paginate them. So let's put these on different lines so it's easier to read. Now before returning that, so before this latest, I can use a where function which allows me to add a condition and query my database based on this condition. So this method will look for a column. So I want to say, for example, where the title, that means the title column in the listings table. And then we can have an operator or we can leave it empty, but I want to have the like operator. So we are saying where the title is like our request search parameter, like this. Now this statement would work, but I'm saying return only the listings that have the exact match to our search input field. But of course, we don't want to say it should be exactly the same. We want to include the before and after, and we can just concatenate percentage signs. That means whatever goes before this search input field and the same goes after it. So notice these dots, that means we are concatenating these percentage signs. So this is just a simple where statement or where query. If we go back to our website and search for listings that have the text hello in them, we see nothing because we don't have any listings with that text. If we clear our filters and let's search for, for example, this QUI. So if I say QUI and press enter, we have 11 listings that has this QUI in the title and I can search for it. You can see we have that phrase in all these listings. Now we have another problem. When I go to page two, notice our search parameter is gone and we are back to the 20 results. So we lost our query. Now this is quite easy to fix. Basically we want to tell Laravel to include all the URL parameters in the URL when we do another query because this is technically is another query. So we can do that by chaining another method after the paginate method. So as our last method, we want to say with query a string, which is again part of Laravel and it's a function, we need to invoke it. Now let's try this again. So I am going to clear all the parameters. I will search for that QUI again. We have 11 results and the search parameter. If I go to page two, I am keeping that search parameter in the URL so I don't lose my query. Now again, like I said, this can get quite messy because this is not the only method we want and we want to add multiple filters. So for that, we are going to use a scoped filter. So I'm going to cut this where statement and then open our listing model. Now under this user function, I'm going to create another function and I will call it a scope filter. Now the naming here is important. This word scope is a trigger for Laravel to recognize this as a query builder for your model. And whatever you pass after the word scope is going to be the name of your function that you would use in your controller. And we will see in a moment. Anyway, in this scope filter, we want to accept two parameters. One is our query and the other one is our filters. And because we want to have multiple filters, we want to keep them in an array. So we want to say this filters is going to be an array. Now inside the body of these filters, we will apply our where statements or the filters. But before doing that, again, let's just die and dump the filters. And we will come back to this in a moment, but let's see how we can use this now. So we have this scope filter in our listing model and we want to use this to query our listings. So again, we are saying, give us the listings with the user, but this time we want to filter them. Now you notice I'm using the name filter here, and that's because I called this one a scope filter. If I called this one, for example, a scope my tags or my filters, then you would call it as my filter or whatever the name you used. Now we said this is expecting an array of filters. So instead of using this request up here, we can actually use the request function or helper function that can accept an array. So we can pass an array here and then pass down the name of our parameter. So in this case, for example, search. So now if we go back to our website and reload, we still have search parameter here and this array would give us that search parameter and the value of that, which is coming from URL. So this filter, is coming from here and we are just die and dump our filters. That's why we get, we can also use the same request here. So if we just say request and pass a function and reload our page, we get our request object and under query, 
again we have search which is set to the value we passed into our input field and we just want to check if there is a search parameter in the url then apply those where statements so let's do this we can say if we had a key search in our filters so that's what we are doing here we are sending the search element inside an array as a filter so we want to say if that's true then do something and again let's just die and dump filters because i want to show you something else so back to our website if i reload then we get the same array but if there is no search filter you notice we get an error because we are trying to check for something that doesn't exist so we can say if this exists then use it otherwise just return false now if we go back to our website and reload then we don't have an error all right so now let's actually apply the filters so we can grab the query which is our query builder and would represent all the listings and we want to use that same aware statement that we had it in the listing controller so if i paste it i still have it we are just saying look in the title and see if it is like our search query then return the result and we need to change this one because we don't have access to request here so we can just use the request helper function instead of this so we can say request and the key that we are looking for is search all right so at this point we are just bringing that where statement into our model and we are taking these extra steps now this wouldn't make sense if we had only one query but because we will have multiple ones it would be better to use a scoped filter anyway if we test out our filter again it works the same way we have 11 results and we can go to the next page and we still have the search query in the url we can also chain commands to this so for example right now we are only looking in the title but let's say i want to also check in the description so let me put this on a new line and i'm just going to copy this whole thing and paste it underneath so you notice i am moving this end of the statement to the last line and instead of where we want to say or where so with a capital w and this time we want to look under description column but the rest is going to be the same basically we are just saying look into two columns instead of one now let's do this again let's clear the url and search for the same thing and this time we have 20 results so apparently all our listings have the phrase qui in their titles or in their description let's search for something else maybe this tempor so if i paste it here so apparently we have 10 results so that means some of these have the word tempor in their description or in their title now this approach works at this time but later on when we bring in other filters this will give us a problem and i will keep it like this to show you that problems and then we will fix it but for now this is our search function and it works the way we want and of course we will add filters up here if there's any parameters but we will do that when we have all the other filters in place but as the last thing for this video i want to just include the search parameter in this input field and we can send that search parameter which is coming from our request back to the component as a prop so let's add a new prop to our home component and i will call it search term and we will set it to request search so you could either use the request helper function or this request up here doesn't matter now let's go to our home component and in the props object we want to say we have a search term it's going to be type string so now we want to use this for the value of this search input field so let's save that defined props inside a props variable and down here we can say props dot search term now going back to our website if i reload there we have it we have the text and if i change it to something else press enter we still have it in there so let's search for this word for example and we have only four items all right so we know our search is working next is to apply the users filter which we will do in the next video